Wow, so the Canadian government just said that they're going to announce something that's never been done in Canada before, and the changes that they make are absolutely going to need to be drastic, especially given these new polling numbers. The opposition government conservatives have been making absolutely huge gains on the liberals, and if election happened today, well, the conservatives would win by a landslide. And based on these numbers, any new ideas or new announcements that the Liberal government can bring to us are going to be incredibly important, and they need to be drastic in order for them to make a change, both in uh, the public's opinion of them and in actually to make a difference in these issues they're trying to draft policy around. This is exactly what Sean Fraser, the new Housing Minister for Canada, amped us up for with the, him talking about this announcement that had never been done before in Canada. And we'll get to what that big announcement is in just a minute, but given the slide in the polls here for the Liberals, certain Liberal members of Parliament are now all talking about, oh, how could this be happening? Why are we dropping so much? And some of their responses I found shocking. I think you will too. And this directly ties to this new big announcement. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Communicating with Canadians is very, very important. Um, we've sort of failed in being very um, aggressive in, in promoting what the government has done and has realized for Canadians. Canadians don't want um, politicians that uh, are putting emphasis and taking advantage on uh, fear of anger. They want politics that is made, made positively. They, they're looking for optimism they and they want also uh, positive messages. I don't know if you caught there the reporter sort of interjecting while Manolini Jolie was telling people what they wanted, saying, hey, I think they want a house. I don't think they're concerned about the, the, the tone of the messaging that the politicians are giving them. But what I actually want to talk about is that first uh, quote there from another Liberal member of Parliament saying, I think that we have a big problem here in terms of our messaging. We have a big problem here in terms of how we market the things that we've already done for Canadians. It seems like she thinks, oh, we are doing lots of good things and enough for Canadians, but they just don't know that we're doing it. So we're not talking about it enough. This is the issue. This is why people are now leaning towards voting conservative instead of liberal. So keep that marketing thought in mind when I show you this. This happened just yesterday morning where Sean Fraser, this new housing minister, and uh, Prime Minister Trudeau came out and revealed this, this big, never done in Canada before announcement. I mean, housing in big cities around the world has already become out of reach for many, 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 in places like New York, Paris, London, San Francisco. But we're not going to follow those examples. When we launched the $4 billion housing accelerator fund, a fund to build more homes faster, we told municipalities that they could access those funds with bold plans to eliminate red tape and remove barriers. So here we are today with a very first agreement under the housing accelerator fund. When we saw that Josh's plan was ambitious and serious, we said, okay, Let's get him funding so he can fast track the building of more housing here in London. So at the beginning of that clip, Trudeau says, look at all of these unaffordable places across the world. We're not going to follow that example, sort of uh, declining to admit that, hey, we're already there. <laughs> like, like uh, come on, man. But the main point here is that this big announcement never done before in Canada is him announcing the first sort of funding that's going out from this housing accelerator program. If you're not familiar with that program, it was something that was promised in 2021 and made into law in 2022. And only now, uh, nearing the end of 2023, are we getting this first funding going to one municipality to build 2,000 homes. This is $74 million from the $4 billion fund. Um, this is the first of uh, what they're saying is going to be a number of, of different announcements. But all that to say, this is stuff we already knew about. This is not new housing policy. This is not responding to the concerns of Canadians that they're not doing enough. It seems like it's a response to this concern that they have a marketing problem, a concern that we people don't know all of the good that we're doing. If they knew all the good that we were doing, they wouldn't be saying that they're gonna vote conservative now. That, that's what this feels like. It's nothing new, even though it was billed as something new. Uh, it's, hey, another announcement about something that we told you about two years ago that we promised. 
And to add more context, some more really interesting findings came out today from CMHC, the Canada Mortgage and Housing Commission, uh, this federal agency in Canada um, that handles a lot of uh, housing concerns. And their estimates say that by 2030, well, there's going to be 3.45 million houses short of what we actually need for the population. And if we continue our high population growth, we're actually going to be just over 4 million houses short. So you might be saying, okay, Russell, but the, these these announcements, the thing, the Housing Accelerator Fund, well, that will help chip away at these numbers, right? That should get us like lower down. It's not going to be that much. Well, uh, you might be surprised to hear that these numbers actually already include all of the previous federal announcements. Um, this $3.45 million short by 2030 includes the Housing Accelerator Fund, includes the National Housing Strategy. Everything that the current government has baked in has also been baked into these numbers. And people aren't stupid. In this very press conference, a reporter came out and pretty fierily asked, if that's even a word, like, hey, hey buddy, like, we're, we're still going to be three and a half million units short. What else have you got for us? The accelerator fund is factored in to the calculations from your own federal agency that says Canada's short 3.5 million homes by 2030. So can you clarify for voters who are struggling, as you've acknowledged several times now, but not given an answer to, Will your government set out a plan that fills that gap entirely? We know that housing is a challenge, uh, that the solution happens over years. We'll, of course, have more to announce in the coming days. Uh, but the fact is that from the national housing strategy we put forward in 2017 to the work we're continuing to do with things like the Housing Accelerator and the Rapid Housing Initiative, um, we're there to respond to the challenge. So when asked about committing to filling this 3.5 million home gap, uh, he says, hey, we will, we will have more new things to announce, nothing today, but we'll have new things to announce. But hey, look at all these things we're already doing. We have a marketing problem, remember? You need to sort of see all the good that we're doing. And that's, that's our main issue as a party. It kind of blows my mind. But okay, $74 million to build these 2,000 uh, affordable units for folks in London. That's a good start. Hopefully we should see this in more places. And, and Trudeau actually uh, invites more mayors to apply to this program. Listen to this. So based on Josh's success and the announcement we're making right now, I want to challenge other mayors right across the country to step up with their proposals too. So we can get building more homes, increasing supply, and lowering the prices for families. So he says, come all ye mayors, apply to me for funding, put together these 80 page proposals and come to me and we'll decide if it deserves funding from the Housing Accelerator Fund. Okay, it might be a slow process, but at least there's a way to get funding to build housing uh, until you, you take a look at this, which is more information about this Accelerator Fund. It's a $4 billion federal funding program for Canadian municipalities and indigenous governments with applications due summer of 2023. We're right at the tail end, if not having this program already closed, right? So it seems like this appeal to additional mayors like isn't actually going to do anything if you don't have your proposal in yet while well, the deadline's already going to close. And this makes me think of two different approaches for trying to solve this problem. The, the first one, the one that the Trudeau government is sort of taking on here is, okay, you apply for something, you draft that proposal, many drafts, many uh, many people working on that proposal, you submit it to us, we review it multiple times, there's all this bureaucracy, and then maybe if you're lucky, you're going to get this approval approved, and then maybe you can start building homes over the next three, four years. It, it's very slow moving, right? Very bureaucratic, takes the, the work of a lot of government employees to make this happen. Now, compare this to potentially big blanket policy changes that automatically apply to everyone immediately when those changes are made. Uh, uh, let me show you some thoughts from Pierre Polyev on this most recent speech that he's given at the uh, the recent conservative um, uh, sort of gala, not gala, uh, what is it called? The conservative sort of um, uh, gathering where they all talk about their policy decisions. He gave a rather rousing speech and he talks about this sort of uh, difference in policy making approach. My common sense plan is to have a new funding formula that links, links the number of federal dollars cities get for infrastructure to the number of houses they allow to be completed. More specifically, we will require big cities permit 15% more home building per year or lose federal infrastructure money. Pas de logement, pas d'argent fédéral. Two, those that beat the 15% target will get a building bonus, right? Incentives work, and we will pay for results, for roofs overheads and keys and doors, not for promises. 
So he talks about the differences in the approach, big sweeping changes that apply to everybody versus sort of applications, paying for um, the promises, this is what he says, versus paying for results, right? Paying for people to like write up these applications and put those through and then giving them the money versus giving them the money after they've done the thing via in incentives. And um, this is what he's talking about. Now, I wanna be clear here. I'm not fully convinced that Pierre Polyev's housing policy will solve this problem. It's a very big problem. And uh, I think some of the solutions that he's uh, putting forth are a little bit simplistic and maybe don't account for some of the nuance and, and sound very good. But that being said, th this is big, bold strategy and it's something that is working for him in the polls for sure. And it seems like some of the language from Pierre Polyev's big speech this past week has really been resonating with Canadians, so much so that it seems like it's being borrowed by the Prime Minister now. Uh, let's compare these two clips and see if you see anything similar. Hard work used to get you a powerful paycheck that bought you good food and a decent home and retirement in a safe neighborhood and a free country. And every generation was just a little bit better off than their parents. That was the promise of Canada. The promise of Canada. It's one that says that every generation gets to benefit from the hard work of the previous generation and succeed even more. Well, for far too many people, that promise of Canada seems under threat. Today is Thursday, that Pierre Polyev clip was from last Friday, and the Trudeau clip was from yesterday or, or Wednesday. It seems like Trudeau is recognizing, hey, this message is working with Canadians. Maybe I can just uh, uh, do pay the bit largest compliment to Amporo some of that material. But if you've watched this channel before, you know that we're not just all about slamming one political party. We give them flowers when they do the right thing, and um, maybe down the road, if Pierre Polyev is, is uh, prime minister, I'll certainly be critical of him in that role as well. Um, but we got to talk about the positives too. And it seems like the Liberal government is at least learning or trying to take more steps because just today, as I was making this video, um, the federal Liberal government came up with an announcement that I think is actually a, a pretty good idea. It's a, it's a positive um, uh, for the Liberal government. They announced that they are going to end the uh, charging of GST, that's the sales tax, from new uh, purpose-built rental construction in response to the rising cost of living. Now, this is very good. It essentially makes it 15% uh, roughly more profitable to build and sell these big apartment buildings. This is trying to attack the, the rental housing issue. Like, I mean, do you remember when uh, a lot of these houses and these like apartment buildings built specifically to be apartment buildings were going up everywhere? That was when it was more profitable to do so. People could build them and sell these buildings to other people for a profit. Um, but these days with the permitting process and the large amounts of tax you have to pay, uh, that's largely slow down. Um, this is a good move from the Liberal government, making it more profitable for big developers to build the types of housing stock that we actually need to, to help people, right? This is a good thing. It's a good sign that they're listening to experts. Just a couple of weeks ago, uh, a coalition of housing affordability experts recommended this action in a, in a very large report amongst a whole bunch of other recommendations that they think all political parties should implement. This is a good sign that the government is listening and maybe is starting to recognize we need to be bigger, we need to be bolder with our housing policy. Otherwise, we're not gonna get any votes. Like this is one of the top issues for Canadians right now. The question remains though, is it too little too late? And is this even intervention, or is this intervention even close enough um, to balancing the crazy supply demand imbalances that we have from our dramatically surging population, right? Is this too little too late? And can we trust the changes that are announced by the Liberal government as they recognize that this is a bigger problem than they thought? Can we trust that it will be implemented fast enough to make an impact, right? Um, given this sort of approval mechanism that resulted in them announcing this accelerator fund in 2021 and the very first uh, investment going out well, just yesterday, uh, can we trust them to actually implement these new policies fast enough or w is it just like a stop gap until we have a new government? It all remains to be seen, but I just thought it was wild and I wanted to bring this to you to say like, hey, look at this big announcement that we're going to come out with and it's just like another round of funding for this program that you set up two years ago, right? Just wild. I'm curious what you think about it. Did you catch that Pierre Polyev speech? Uh, it was it was interesting. It seems like he's really got his message honed. Again, uh, I don't know uh, who's going to be able to solve a lot of these problems, but I think, it seems like a lot of Canadians are thinking, okay, maybe it's time for a change here. Let me know what you think about all of this. I read every single comment, so leave me one there. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And with all of that said, 
I'll see you next time.